guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell, based on the title today, we are talking about the most recent collection. So this is the second edit coming from Phoebe Philo. From what I understand, the first collection we saw was A1 and there were a couple drops with A1 and now we are in the A2 edit. So this is the second edit and there will be drops within this edit. This collection dropped March 7th, 9 a.m. Eastern. And this collection comes just a few days after fashion month has ended and I will say side note after observing certain collections the Phoebe Philo effect we are already seeing this season even though she had her first drop five six months ago which is what happens ultimately that's not the topic of this but Phoebe Philo's second edit is really truly a continuation of the first edit so this from Kathy Horan of The Cut according to her London office 60 new styles will be available in this edit spanning four deliveries from today Day through May. You can expect the widest range of new styles in the current delivery and the next one, the company said, and selected designs from the first edit will also be available. Hey guys, so sorry for the odd edit. I'm trying to edit this video while I'm up north and yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to have this video in on time, but I just wanted to really emphasize this point about these 60 items that we are going to be seeing. The 60 items of this A2 edit, they're going to slowly be released over the course of now until May, as well as we are seeing pieces being brought back from A1. I have noticed that there are several pieces that have yet to be released just based on the images that we saw when this collection was released. I counted in total, there is 93 items on the website currently but from that 93 what is very interesting to me is only half of those items are really new added product and then of those new products only really half of those new products are new designs and what I mean by that is of the new items we're seeing we're seeing them in new seasonal color variations new materials new dimensions but overall we're only seeing a few new designs be released in this drop which to me says that a a2 is really just a part of this overall like A collection that we saw fall of last year. And what she's doing here is instead of just wiping the slate clean and coming out with a new collection, it's just building upon or it's an extension of what she's already started, which I honestly think is a very interesting move because when you think about how fashion is, just right off the back of fashion month, right? A lot of these brands, they'll have not just a collection every six months, but typically most brands have a collection every three months and even more right some depending on the brand every six to eight weeks it seems whereas this with this a collection it's split up into one and two and within that slowly product is being dropped this is fashion going at an ultra slow pace allowing us to really take everything in the way that she's doing this almost kind of made me think about how her first two runway collections that we saw at Celine spring summer 2010 and fall winter 20 2010. It almost felt like while they were different collections, different settings, everything, they almost felt like they complemented each other. Very similar silhouettes, but just appropriated for the fall, winter, or the spring, summer seasons. And I think what we're seeing with A1 and A2 is kind of a similar concept with this overall A collection. Quantity-wise, it's not a massive drop. It's definitely a different way to look at fashion. It's a different format to release fashion. I actually think as a consumer, it's a lot easier for us to take in when brands bring out a bag and then they discontinue the bag like in six months and I just think from a consumer perspective it creates a greater level of permanence instead of being a part of a temporary trend cycle. So the whole theme of her line is to create a continuous body of work, a collection that builds upon the last. It's about creating a wardrobe of forever pieces. Some may have timeless appeal but I also feel like there are select pieces that have a very strange whimsical artsy element. Some may even border on man repelling but in principle this is very Phoebe Philo quality over quantity designs that transcend the trends but there is also this undercurrent of something a little bit odd something a little bit strange something a little bit more particular and perhaps even weird and for this review we're just gonna go in chronological order just the order that we're actually seeing these shown on the website let's just first look at the jackets and the coat section the first jacket that we saw was actually a jacket I was waiting to see 
we saw promotional images of this jacket, but this is the jacket with the drop waist. And this one's going for a insane amount, $8,800. By now, we are kind of expecting this price from Phoebe Philo. It's in this beautiful dark berry. We've got big volume. It's very 80s Claude Montana, but then we've got this final neck detailing. Next, we have this utility drop waist vest. Next, we have this bomber jacket. So it's very cropped. When I look at this, I honestly see someone like a Hailey Bieber wearing this. This kind of like sporty, confident, cool, but because it's cropped, it's kind of a little bit more, I don't want to say sexy, but the proportions are a little bit more playful. Next, we have this Milanese jacket. It's going for $3,900. I love these cool gray tones this season. I feel like we're seeing this across the board, but this looks honestly so good with those burgundy tones, the ox bloods, the berry colors. There's something about gray mixed with these types of berry cherry kind of colors. Here we have the single breasted jacket, $3,400. It's in this light khaki pinstripe wool, very earthy tones. And we saw a lot of these earthy tones the first drop. We're still seeing that quite heavily in this collection. Next, we have this padded jacket with a gathered waist. I love the zipper detail around the funnel neck. You can attach a hood to it. A major thing we saw around a lot of the outerwear this season and the first A1 drop was the funnel neck as well as the scarf coats. It's not only giving me protective design choice, but I also think for most people, not everyone wants to show off their neck. It's nice how she has a lot of pieces that really conceal the neck. It obviously protects it. It keeps it warm. From a stylistic perspective, it looks insanely chic. When I see these kind of neck details, it reminds me of Celine Fall Winter 2010. Some of my favorite coats of all time are from that collection, but it's very interesting. I've seen from this recent fashion month, we're seeing a lot of these kind of funnel neck detailing. Next, we have this very classic tailored coat with this drop waist. It's double breasted. This is one of these classic coats you will have for the rest of your life. Next, we have this utility drop waist jacket. Not gonna lie, the toddler mom in me really appreciates all of these pocket utility detailing. Very muddy, browny, grayish, greenish, brownish color we saw last season and again we're seeing this season. And for this drop, I really only want to highlight and focus on the new pieces just so that I'm not repeating some of the things I've already stated in my other videos. But if you want to check out my reviews of the A1 drops, I will link those videos in the description box below. But here we have these trousers. So these are going for $1,300. Again, yeah, it's, ex it's pricey, but I would say this is pretty comparable to what we are seeing on the market right now. Again, we're seeing a lot of pinstripes, which is very interesting to me. Obviously business attire, but we're seeing this in suits and jackets and shirts, but I feel there's definitely this professional, formal, corporate kind of vibe. But I also feel like the way we are seeing a lot of these sort of dressier, trouser styled today, it honestly could just like style this t-shirt and like sneakers or something. Okay, these next pants were really interesting to me. These are the BMX trousers. Again, <laughs> very opposite to the last pair very utilitarian vibes yet I can somehow imagine this woman that wore the pinstripe pants is also wearing the BMX trousers whoever this woman is is probably the Phoebe Philo woman these pants they look very durable flexible they're sort of these reinforcement accents these extra padded layers look like they're protective for like those high impact areas I do get the sense that Phoebe Philo is not just a mom but she's totally a boy mom I know she has a daughter as well but what I've noticed, just there's something about the intense practicality, comfort, wearability that you as a, a mom could only dream of. But I think in general, this theme of women on bikes in the first few images that we saw of the A1 drop makes me think of a woman that is more independent, almost adventurous and thrill-seeking in a way. Yet at the same time throughout this collection, we've got also women in suits and like jackets and like structured suits and jackets. I think it's kind of this push and pull of power dressing versus wanting freedom and independence. Some of these themes remind me of that old Celine car-inspired collection. Back to my point of having a wardrobe of quality pieces, those wardrobe building pieces, but then also having those particular pieces that is very signature or very much a you piece. Next, we have these zip jeans in black cotton denim. These are going for $1,600. This zips on the back of your pants is very much a theme that we're seeing throughout this collection. Phoebe Philo has done this in the past before at Celine, adding unusual zippers to pants, like she's definitely done this. But this 
this kind of detail not only feels very avant-garde to me, but also very provocative. Next, we have these straight leg leather pants. This is, again, a very classic looking leather pant. The cut is a little bit tighter on this. To me, leather pants always kind of feel very like edgy and bold. But I also think leather pants, especially I think in this particular cut, it's something that can transcend the trends. In today's day and age, you can wear these in almost any setting. Maybe not every single work environment, but I think a lot of work environments, you could wear a pair of pants like these. It does lend itself to many different occasions. Next, we have these oversized trousers. We saw a lot of these sorts of pants come from A1. This is more in like a gray salt and pepper. So next we're going on to the tops category. Here we have this liquid high neck top. Next we have this upright collar shirt. We've seen shirts like this from the previous drop. Next we have a sculpted shirt. It has these very interesting shoulder pad details. There's this real aspect of power dressing. Next we have knitwear. This recent edit, we didn't see anything at least for this drop newly offered. There's three sweaters, but I think we've seen those before, so I'm just not going to cover this section. Next, we have dresses and skirts. Now, I'm pretty sure they had this dress in the black, which we also see here. Now, it's newly available in this dark berry color. We also have this long t-shirt dress. Next, we have this scarf skirt. They had this previously, but it was in more of a black wool. Now, we have it in this dark berry leather. Next, we have this high slit tailored column skirt. So, now let's go on to handbags. I know a lot of you guys are very excited about this section. What I think is very interesting about Phoebe Philo is there really isn't a huge range of bags. We are seeing a continuation of a, the initial bag she dropped. We're also seeing new colors, new stylistic variations, and just one new style. It's really far from a handbag heavy collection. Again, we're seeing the continuation of the small kit cabas. This was the style I saw probably the most heavily featured on social media. It was a bag that was picked up by the fashion Fashion girls. The fact that we are seeing this in the chocolate brown and the black continued again. But what I thought was very interesting was they decided to bring this in a new size. Now, personally, I was hoping that maybe they bring this in a smaller size, but no, she went bigger with this bag. This is the medium Kit Cabas. To me, this looks almost more like a proper work bag. It doesn't have so much of the east-west proportions. The length of this is 17 inches. This could definitely be a great work tote, great weekend, great travel bag. To me, this very much channels old Celine with that metal hardware. When I think about bags like the classic, you know, the bag that everyone called the, the box bag, even the trapeze, the metal detail, it's kind of giving that, but in like a, a minimal tote. And I will say for those that love the Margot, but right now, if you're trying to hunt down the Margot, there might be some East West versions floating around or maybe you can do a pre-order on those. But it's a bag that I know a lot of people are on like several wait lists for. If you are looking for something that is kind of a similar vibe, very true to Phoebe Philo, you're looking for that live life kind of tote that is that quote unquote quiet luxury, minimal, however you want to say it. This is definitely one to consider. I think the fact that we're seeing it brought out again in another size. The fact that this was a style we saw styled by a lot of people. I don't want to say if you're looking for the alternative to the Margo. If you are looking for something comparable, you're just not vibing with a lot of the other brands, you want that, in essence, quiet luxury bag. This is definitely one to consider. Okay, so now let's talk about the gig bag. Honestly, this is kind of super underrated. I have seen this on social media. And when I have seen it, I'm like, wow, this actually looks so good. It is the best price bag at $3,500. Previously, it did come in black, white, which we're still seeing, but also in ox blood. Now we have it in dun and brown. Again, this is another reference or callback to the old Celine Trio bag, but it's in a bigger size. Again, we're not seeing small bags from Phoebe Philo. She's going bigger, which we are kind of going this direction anyways with a lot of handbags. I did notice that this past fashion month, I think Bottega Veneta and Fendi had sort of like compartment sort of style bags very similar to this. It's a very Phoebe Philo bag and honestly the more I look at it the more I love it. If I didn't already have so many of these grab and go style bags this would be honestly one I'd heavily consider. So now this next bag which was kind of the bag that if I'm going to be honest offended a lot of people in terms of price point. This is the extra large Cabas bag. Starts at $8,500. It's just the price that is so shocking. We previously saw this bag in the black leather, the suede as well as the toffee suede but now we are seeing this Java brown as well as this camo print. I don't know if that's really my vibe, but 
there's that. Okay, so next we have the drive bag, which we still see in the black and the lipstick red, but we are now seeing it in the Dun and Liala, Liala, I don't know how to say that. I'm not gonna lie, like I really, really, really want this peg. It's just the price, of course, a lot of this collection is just a little bit too much to handle. I know this bag is definitely not for everybody. I do think there is a fair point when people are like $5,800, I'd rather save up for a Birkin and if I were you, probably a better investment. Another Hermes bag is on my wish list for 2024. I just have to ask myself, while I would love to have a fourth Birkin or a second Kelly, this is more my vibe. I am very tempted by this bag. I'm mostly tempted by the black or the lipstick red. Those would be the colors for me. This kind of reimagined lady bag is just giving me aesthetically everything I want in a handbag. I might have to take off one of the bags on my initial wish list. So next we have the bean bag. While I do like this style, I have been heavily contemplating getting the Celine Eloise, but this bean bag, <laughs> bean bag sounds so funny, but this bean bag makes the Celine Eloise honestly look like a bargain at this point. It's just so expensive. It comes in the black, chocolate brown, and the done color. I think it is quite interesting how there is only the Kit Cabas, the extra large Cabas, the Gig, the Drive, and now the bean bag. We only have five styles. It's not a huge range of bags, and I actually like that. While when I look at like some of these fashion runway shows, it's like there's honestly like a new entire line of handbags with every season. BB Philo is just taking her time with these designs and, and I'm totally okay with not having 10 collections every season, frankly. Now let's talk about shoes. So again, we saw the soft square toe ankle boot come back this season, but now we have it in this mastic color, this new style. This is the high tassel mule. Again, this was part of sort of the preview promotional email. By the way, guys, there really wasn't a whole lot of marketing or hype. This was a very quietly released collection. Just kind of like, hey, here's the email a few days or a week in advance that we're gonna drop this collection and that was kind of it. Back to this tassel mule. I don't know what it is. I feel like we've been seeing a lot of fringe come back in fashion. I don't know if it's kind of this boho revival style coming back, but if that's really not your style, you can get the high mule. I actually really like this mule. I think it's really simple. Next, the club loafer came back, but now we have it in this cement color. Next, we have this black mastic suede detailing. When I look at the shoe, I'm like, yes, this is Phoebe Philo. This is old Celine in the best way, but for 2024, this is her and this is not gonna be for everybody. Okay, next we have the soft square toe pumps. She brought it back again in this black color. Now we also have it in this stucco and this dun color, as well as there are these soft flats. Again, this to me is giving mid 2000s era where almost like you would just see toe cleavage. And I don't know what's going on in fashion right now, but this is definitely coming back. I guess it's part of the 20 year trend cycle. Now let's take a look at accessories. So at the top, we have these Bombay sunglasses. From the first edit, we did have the black as well as the caramel. Now we have it in this fume. Color. It's kind of like this smoky kind of grayish color here. Next we have the peak sunglasses. I love these sunglasses. I think these are so cool. I totally recommend. Pretty uh, reasonable price when it comes to designer sunglasses. So there's that. Next we have this ball mesh pendant in silver. Again, it's kind of giving me those ornamental Baroque pearls that Phoebe Philo did at Celine. Again, the continuation of the mum necklace. We're seeing these double ball earrings in gold and silver. Now, a lot of people were talking about, I thought was kind of hilarious, was this pillow scarf. By itself, you're like, what is that? But when you see it on models, there's something about the way the models are just holding it like this. It is so weird. It's undeniably strange and weird. These cozy, comfortable fashion pieces, I personally just love as a Canadian. And then finally, we had these bucket hats. I feel like we had this trend towards bucket hats four years ago, those bucket hats with logos on them. I remember Dior had them and Prada had them, but this is not that. It's not the logo bucket hat. You're not wearing it in that kind of utility bag with like a bunch of pockets kind of look. That more ladylike look is the vibe. So yes, that is my video. And I just really wanna emphasize how this collection is just really building upon what she already started. It is not really the way that we see a lot of fashion collections drop. We're seeing a lot of recurring themes similar 
similar styles but new colors or new sizes but the theme the general idea is about creating a defined very decisive wardrobe but you still have enough flexibility obviously whenever I think about Phoebe Philo we're talking about things like quiet luxury this in principle is very much about quality and long-lasting pieces but I also think it's important as I've mentioned to have those very distinctive pieces those unexpected pieces but those pieces that feel authentic to you while those BMX pants may not be for you I think the idea behind it maybe you're really into bikes or maybe your son really likes BMX bikes and you've been kind of curious about his pants but you are also a CEO it's kind of about finding those pieces that are more distinctive to you maybe you have more of an affinity for that boho vibe or maybe you were somebody that wore Chloe back in the 2000s or maybe you were somebody that did the boho vibes of the 2010s but you don't want to do that in 2024 now in 2024 you're in a bit of a different place but those fringe shoes are really speaking to you and that hobo bean bag kind of a more fresher modern take the idea behind this collection isn't just about basics it's not limited to this idea of a 15 item capsule wardrobe per se i personally find honestly myself as a canadian when people are like i only have 15 items in my capsule wardrobe i can't even understand that in february as a canadian you're probably alone wearing 15 items coat gloves scarf hat sunglasses snow can be very blinding bag sweater long shirt short sleeve shirt pants belt socks boots all of these things right the idea of having a 15 item wardrobe isn't really realistic i don't think that's what this collection is saying but it's going back to this idea of buying those quality separates which really is not a new concept i think about donna karen and the whole seven easy pieces it's evolving on that and building upon that but having those quality well-made timeless pieces that transcend the trends while phoebe Philo's vision in this era of fashion which is very quiet i would say her collections still allow for these very bold and statement pieces those kind of odd conversation pieces that are also very radically wearable as she says there's that quote about how she wants to make fashion that makes you feel confident comfortable feel good about yourself but you can also go on with your day and that's what this collection is I'm personally just excited she's back i'm just afraid for my wallet that's the only thing now that's my video thank you so much for joining me in another one and i hope to see you in the next one bye